We're back here at the JCC Tennis Facility. Today we'll be covering part two of our series on stroke reduction. And today's topic is going to be the backhand. We're going to be going to the basic mechanics and techniques of how we teach it here. So stick around and hope it's helpful. Okay, so let's start with finding the right grip for the backhand. So the easiest way to do this is going to be put your racket in a perpendicular position, right? Now I'm going to take my right hand and I'm going to grab the racket at the bottom like if it was a continental grip, okay? You can also call it a hammer grip. We use that with the little kids. Now with the left hand, what we're going to do is we're going to place it naturally on top of the right hand, okay? And that's really going to give you a pretty good solid starting backhand grip. So let's start with the progression of the back end, okay? Uh, we're going to be going through some key aspects of developing the shot. Well, Paul here is going to be helping me demonstrate it, so let's run it down. Okay, Paul is going to start it. So notice that Paul is pivoting now with the left foot that we're doing. He keeps his, his head over his right shoulder because you want to keep an eye on the ball. And also, he takes that racket back nice and early because you don't want to be late on that preparation, okay? Now, for step two, he's actually going to step in with that right foot. He can stay that low balance and a kind of a wide base, get that racket ready in position so he's ready for that strike and he's going to keep his head over his shoulder so he keeps his eye on the ball, okay? Now, for the final step, step three, he's going to actually transfer his weight from his left to his right. It's going to make a racket extension, and that's what you should be doing for a basic back. The back is a left-hand dominant shot. That is if you're a right-handed player. If you're a left-handed player, it'll be your opposite hand, in this case, your right. Okay, so we're going to be going through some exercises and progressions to help you get there. Our first exercise is going to be called the non-dominant forehand. So Paul here is going to help us demonstrate the lefty forehand. Notice that he has his backhand grip right now. He's going to take his right hand off to get into the lefty forehand grip we want to use. Okay, so basically it's like doing a forehand for the step one, two, three. Okay, so he's going to take his racket back. He's going to hit the ball in front and extend. Similar to as if you were doing a forehand with your dominant hand. Exactly the same. Racket back, hit, and finish. Okay, back, lift, and finish. Here we go. One more time, Paul, please. And we want to emphasize on the dominance of your opposite hand. Okay, so for exercise number two, Paul is going to start with his two-handed stroke on the back end, and he's going to finish with the lefty forehand, okay? So here we go right now. He starts with two hands, and he's going to finish with that left hand. Okay, two hands, left hand follow through. Two hands, left hand follow through. And notice that we want to keep the importance on your left hand, okay? That's the importance here. Your dominant part is going to be with your lefty while you do this swing. Okay, one more, Paul, please. So for exercise number three, Paul's going to be doing a two-handed backhand, but now the follow-through is going to be with both hands. However, the right hand is going to be lightly touching the racket, okay? So he's going to do a full follow-through, full backswing, everything, but the right hand is going to be barely touching the racket. So what we normally do here is notice that Paul has his left, his, I mean, his right hand open because he doesn't want to put any kind of grip on it. It's just a lightly under, and he's going to keep his dominance with the lefty, okay? Okay, so let's start with some examples here, okay? So notice, Paul is going to keep his right hand on the racket, but it's lightly touching. And however, his follow-through is with both hands now, okay? So he's going to keep the follow-through with both hands, but the right hand is not the importance again. We're going to keep the importance with that left hand with the follow-through. One more, Paul. Okay, good. Okay, so for exercise number four, Paul is going to stand with his two hands on the racket, follow through with both hands. However, he's going to finish with his right hand saying hi. We call it the palm up. That way we enforce that you keep your dominance on that left hand on your non-dominant hand, okay? So let's get to some examples now. So Paul is going to start with his both hands on the racket, follow through, and finish with his palm on the right hand up, okay? So he's facing with the palm up. Here we go. Keeping the dominance on that left hand or your non-dominant shot. Again, really good, Paul. Give me a couple more. Two hands starting. Right hand finishes with the palm up. One more, Paul, please. Good job. Okay, so now we're gonna go for the final part, put everything together. Paul's gonna go through his full backhand swing, uh, left hand dominant, but he now he's gonna actually make it with two hands all the way around. Here's how it looks like. So let's, let's put everything together, Paul. Here we go, he's gonna keep his racket closed at all times. Good job, starts with the back of his two-handed back. Follow through, he's still keeping the dominance with the lefty. There we go, good rotation. Two more. Go. One more. 
where the punch rip is with your knuckles up, that should give you a pretty good one-handed backhand rip. And that's what we call also the semi-western back. So the first thing you wanna do here is to make a quick unit turn or shoulder turn as the ball is moving towards your backhand side. Now common mistake is to move first and then engage in the turn, which will make you hit late. Remember to keep head above shoulder and maintain your eye on the ball. For the next part, we want to step into the ball, getting ourselves into a closed position while we maintain our head above our shoulder. Notice that our right arm is almost fully stretched out and our racket is raised higher, left elbow almost at shoulder height, and this is to apply more leverage on the ball, hence increasing our power. As we begin our swing into the contact, our racket is going to drop behind our body and below the wrist. This is part of the swing pattern for racket speed as we move into the contact point in front. Back arm stays close to the body, which is important as we move into the final step. On our last step, which is the most important, our racket extends forward and high above our head level, finishing behind us. Our backhand moves into the opposite direction and downwards, counterbalancing our right. Notice that as this is happening, your chest becomes fully stretched. This is of utmost importance as we want to keep our sideways position and our left hand helps us achieve that by balancing the shot. So I hope this was helpful for everybody. Remember, this is the blueprint of what we want you guys to be practicing predominantly on the backhand. And uh, remember, on the two-handed, it's more of a non-dominant shot. So if you're right-handed, it'll be your left-hand dominant. If you're a lefty player, it'll be your right-handed dominant, okay? And the one-handed, as a summary, uh, what you want to do is have proper spacing from the ball at the beginning, at, you, at the first turn. And then as you, fall, up, you finish the shot and follow through, you want a big packet extension, okay, at the end. Uh, kind of like if you were giving somebody a hug. Uh, so we think that if you guys practice this, put in the effort, you guys will be improving those back ends significantly and you guys can get starting out and getting some incredible back -ends. So we wanted to give a shout out to Babylon. Um, we used their gear for this episode. We used um, a Babylon Pure Drive, we used a Pure Strike, and we also used a Pure Drive Versus. So if you all need like products or you want info on Babylon gear, feel free to shout out to us um, and we can help you out. And like piggyback on what he's saying, Babylon is a great source for starting out in tennis. They got all the tennis gear you guys need from rackets, shoes, apparel, hats, you name it, they got it. And uh, like we said, if you guys need anything from Babylon, let us know if you guys the right fit for your starting tennis team, okay? All See right. you next time.